Let's cut straight to the chase on this one. You might have seen reports that a recently released crack for Resident Evil Village on PC improves performance, opening up the possibility that paying customers of the title were delivered a compromised experience. Anti-piracy DRM actually making the gameplay experience worse. Now, I'm not going to claim I have all of the answers here, but what I can say for sure is that the cracked version of the game well, I have tested it and there are profound improvements to the stock experience and the money shot really is here. Same PC, same area, same scenario, horrendous frame times and a collapse to frame rate on the official version and a gigantic improvement with the crack installed. But really, this is not a good look. This story really begins when we look back at our initial coverage of the game. The console versions of Resident Evil Village, that all were really good. Uh, everyone gets a good deal on the new wave of consoles at least. This is another expert deployment of the RE engine from Capcom and as cross-gen title goes it's excellent all around. 60 frames per second, ray tracing if you're willing to take a small performance hit and the ability to turn off RT completely if you want which is actually a good idea on Xbox Series S because ray tracing hammers the frame rate really hard. But what about the PC version? Well, this one was kind of weird. We know what the RE engine is capable of because it has been successfully used before. And in actual fact, while the coverage of Resident Evil Village at the moment is focusing on the performance problems, much of the game actually plays out just fine. And we'll talk about that in a bit. The point is that Alex made a series of observations in our PC tech review that really should have been addressed but weren't. And it starts with general combat where it seems that certain animations produce a noticeable stutter for no apparent reason. You can see that if we look back at the original review. Take a look at the graph there. A dip to frame rate in combat but more to the point a big spike in frame time. As Alex pointed out, if you're creating a first-person shooter but the process of shooting in first-person is delivering an unsatisfactory experience, well, you've got problems. And let's just remember here that the console editions of this game don't have any such issues at all. The second issue Alex highlighted concerned behaviour around the Maidens. The storm of insects seems to kick off a tremendous impact to performance, which again does not happen in the console versions of the game. Frame times here are tremendously high, the stuttering is extraordinary. Alex tested here with an RTX 2070 Super, but I've confirmed that the same thing happens on an RTX 3080. Now with the combat animation stutter, Alex was running at 4K60 with VSync enabled, but I actually tested everything with VSync off with performance fully unlocked to see the full extent of the stutter and it's actually a fair bit worse. But yes, fundamentally the truth is, that the cracked version of the game resolves the primary performance issues we encountered at launch while two months on. Those same issues remain unaddressed by Capcom. Why is this happening? Well, the people who removed the content protection from the game suggest that both de novo and Capcom's own copy protection are present in the game with Capcom's anti-piracy measures actually embedded within de novo, making it even less optimal. By stripping out what the hackers call Capcom's entry points for the DRM, which do seem to be tied to a bunch of game events like combat and uh, the issue with the Maidens, well, the game is absolutely transformed in those areas. And yeah, to get to the bottom of this, I profiled the first hour of play. Every frame produced by the game on my machine in terms of both stock and cracked performance. I'm using a Core i9-10900K here with an RTX 3080. 4K resolution in game using the interlacing reconstruction technique and with a range of mid to high to max settings across rasterization and ray tracing. First of all, I want to point out that with decent settings management and tapping into that excellent reconstruction technique, Resident Evil Village on PC is performant as you would hope and expect it to be. Seems that when the game is allowed to go about its business as per the norm, it runs very well. 4K resolution here, I'm actually getting a really good high frame rate experience. I've got matched content here and whether it's cutscenes or traversal, the game runs without a hitch. You'll note that I've rearranged the standard Digital Foundry performance grids here to give frame time as much prominence as frame rate. 
Truth is that once frame rates go well north of 60 FPS, frame rate as a metric becomes less and less useful. Fundamentally, you're subdividing a single second to the point where frame rate differences can become academic. Frame time though, that's consistency. That's something you can actually feel in play. So look, the ultimate takeaway here is that the game performs as it should with the cracked version installed. I think the other thing to note here is that the cracked version of the game behaves identically to the official DRM'd version for much of the experience. But unfortunately, when the problems start, they are difficult to ignore. You'll note that I've switched up frame time grid range there to 130 milliseconds, and you can see why. Because the game basically freezes for up to 130 milliseconds when you shoot an enemy. Frame times can spike to varying degrees. It's not always as bad as that. But it's not just shooting zombies that causes the freezes. If one of them lunges you, for example, the same thing might happen. Another prolonged stutter. Switch over to the same area with the cracked version of Resident Evil Village installed and the frame times are far more consistent. There are no lurching stutters to 66 milliseconds and higher. The game plays out with relative stability on the frame timeline there, meaning that it's smooth, responsive, and yet again, that word, consistent. And this is the thing really, if the people who hacked the game are being fully on the level with us, the evidence suggests that in a worst case scenario, anti-piracy measures have interfered with one of the core mechanics of the game, and that's a red line that no developer or publisher should cross. And in an alternative scenario, let's assume that the people who hacked the game are not being truthful about the DRM. Well then, the only other plausible explanation is that they have managed to optimize the game in a way that Capcom wasn't able to at launch, and which they haven't been able to fix in over two months since then. Either way you look at it, this is not great. So yeah, the obtrusive stutter in one of the principal game mechanics is not acceptable. It's an example of a technical drawback that really and truly should not have made its way into final user-facing code. Now, maybe if you're playing on super high settings with a generally depressed frame rate, the dips here would be less noticeable. But this does not explain the issue with the maidens. So let's review this one more closely uh, with stock code and with the cracked version installed. As soon as we begin the encounter here, all hell breaks loose basically, a procession of massive stutters so bad that even the frame rate metric, which essentially averages them out, drops to under 40 FPS from over 100 frames per second. The situation improves in the climactic shootout, but here we're still getting a few lurches here. Frame times in the 7 to 8 millisecond range are now in the 60 to 70 millisecond range, impacting consistency. The cracked version of the game, and let me just stress here that I'm actually using the official download with the cracked patch. Well, the evidence is clear to see. It sorts out everything and it restores the consistently high performance of the game. It's the way it should be played. So look, I've reported this to Capcom and I've also invited Denuvo to offer comment. But the main reason I'm making this video is to highlight the issue in the hope of a positive outcome. But there are a number of issues here I find highly concerning. Firstly, implementation of DRM is, we're told, a necessary evil. Now, in the past, we saw a build of Devil May Cry 5 leak without Denuvo, and we could ascertain that the DRM version ran at 93% of the performance level of the DRM free code. It sounds like a lot, but it is doubtful that too many people would notice the difference uh, when you actually look at the performance differential at the millisecond level. But the point is that Denuvo here looks like it has a relatively small fixed cost. There isn't anything like the kind of lurches and stuttering seen in Resident Evil Village. For this title, something changed and not in a good way. First of all, these performance issues are so noticeable that we have to wonder where technical QA went wrong here and why the game actually shipped in the first place like this, DRM or not. Secondly, the point is that we weren't the only review outlet to point out these issues at launch and user feedback is also mentioning these easily repeatable problems. And yet two months on from launch, nothing has changed. And remarkably, it's come down to a piracy outfit of all things to release a fix for the game when paying customers have not had the same courtesy from the developer and the publisher of the game. It's deeply concerning. Now, just to stress here, Digital Foundry does not recommend installing cracked code onto your PC. So are there any other options? 
Well, there is a mod called the RE Framework. There's a link in the video description below. You can check that out. Uh, personally, I found that it didn't work for me, but there is a lot of positive feedback on various forums. And curiously, it does resolve one quirk that the crack has, specifically that there seem to be missing animations. So yes, if Capcom comes back to us on this, we will be sure to share their feedback via social media and DF Direct, but fundamentally the basic principle is this. If it is DRM that is causing the problems, the least that paying customers deserve is an apology, but more to the point, a version of the game that resolves these issues in a way that doesn't involve patching in cracked code. If we have an example here of a pirated version of the game running better than the official release, fundamentally this is simply not good enough. So yeah, that's all I've really got to say about this particular state of affairs. So I'm going to sign off for now. Thanks for watching.